Massive protests across Germany over the weekend as tens of thousands and some reports indicate up to possibly a million or more people took to the streets of Berlin demanding an end to government lockdowns over the coronavirus. Now, most media doesn't want to talk about this story at all, and if they do, they're only referring to these massive numbers of people as conspiracy theorists. But in reality, who are these people? What are they demanding an end to? And why is this happening in Germany, where the media insists that the world has praised that nation for its great response to the coronavirus? The people there, at least a large portion of them, seem to feel differently. I'm Ben Swan, and this is Truth in Media. Some incredible pictures to show you today out of Germany. Before we get to that, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor for this episode, ISE.media, our new free speech platform that we have created to push back against tech censorship and the deplatforming of so many content creators and information gatherers and truth tellers across the internet. I don't have to explain to you what's happening. You see it happening every single day. And the great news here is that you can be part of the Equity Crowd Fund to help launch this site. Become an actual investor in the company and own a piece of a free speech network that is not just for the people, but brought by the people. Speaking of by the people, let's talk about what happened in Germany over the weekend. Massive crowds of people took to the streets, not wearing masks and demanding an end to government lockdown over the coronavirus. In fact, what many of the people there were saying is that wearing masks, they say, makes them slaves. Listen to this. Now, most media is wanting to say that only 17 to 20,000 people showed up. But as you look at these pictures, those pictures appear to show far more than just 17,000 people as the official count. But that aside, it's very interesting to watch how media is constructing kind of the picture around this event. Axios, one of the few publications in the United States to even report on it, wrote about it this way, quote, many in the estimated crowd of 17,000 made up of conspiracy theorists, right-wing populists, and others were not wearing masks, reports AP, which notes, unlike the US, Brazil, and Britain, Germany's government has been praised worldwide for its management of the pandemic. Now, whether or not that praise is coming from who? World leaders, it's coming from the WHO, has no bearing on how the people within the nation feel. Remember that one of the big disconnects that's taking place over the coronavirus is the fact that on Wall Street, there are massive bailouts here in the United States. We just saw the EU pass a massive stimulus program to try to help to keep the EU afloat during this time. The problem with those programs, though, is that they are government programs that then decide winners and losers and pick and choose which industries to bail out and which companies to help. And when many people take to the streets, what they're doing is they're saying, I as an individual am not waiting to be taken care of. I want government to get out of my way. The other thing that's happening that's very interesting here is that Germany is an outlier in Europe in terms of this response. We have not seen other nations have this kind of massive response to coronavirus lockdowns. Now we might in the future, but so far we haven't. The only other country that really seems to be having as much pushback as Germany is the United States, even though the US has not yet seen massive protests, but they might come. And the reason for that is because we're now entering a new second wave of lockdowns that's on its way. New, more stringent mask requirements. For instance, the new law in the state of Indiana that insisted that if you don't wear a mask, you would face up to 180 days in jail and up to a $1,000 fine, again, for not wearing a mask in public. Now, there was so much criticism and pushback against Indiana that the governor actually dropped those penalties uh, as part of this new law, which is a, a good start. But it's also very interesting to watch what's happening in terms of the wear down of people in terms of the response. Remember this, that when we look at the coronavirus, one of the frustrations has been, despite the fact that fact checkers on Facebook will say I'm lying about this, there has been a complete and total disregard for continuity and consistency from so-called healthcare leaders in this country. They've done a terrible job of being consistent. And that's not just in the United States, but it's in other countries as well. 
Wir sind heute hier, weil auf der ganzen Welt nur noch wenige Wissenschaftler, die regierungstreu berichten, gehört werden. Es gibt Tausende, aber Tausende Wissenschaftler, Ärzte weltweit, die werden nicht gehört, die werden mundtot gemacht, die werden zensiert oder als Verschwörungstheoretiker diskreditiert, obwohl sie äh, ganze Universitäten geleitet haben. Dagegen protestiere ich. In reality, there is rebellion that's coming. It's not just coming to Germany, but probably coming here to the U.S. as well. In fact, there's a new article out that talks about whether or not it is time to see civil disobedience over these orders. This is the tug-of-war team that has a monopoly on access to government. The other team, the practical, experienced medical practitioners, are variously depicted as minority nutjobs, eccentrics, headline chasers, small-time, and narrow deniers. There's that word again. Who are a constant risk to millions of human lives and must be ignored. In fact, Never mind ignored. For the good of the cause, they must be smeared, censored, and refused access to the debate. That's exactly what we saw happen with that group, America's frontline doctors, who were in Washington, D.C. last week, held that news conference to talk about what they believe has been a complete mismanagement of this virus, why they believe that other drugs like hydroxychloroquine would work better. Now, we're actually working on a report that we're going to release later this week about hydroxychloroquine. And, and when we do, I'm sure it'll get censored like everything else does regarding this. But in particular, I just want to say about this group, America's Frontline Doctors, uh, there's been a lot of attacks against them personally, a lot of smears and Daily Beast articles written about them. Without ever questioning, because this is a tactic that's used, without ever questioning the substance of what they are saying, in terms of their medical expertise. And so the fact that Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all within 24 hours took down one of the most viral videos of the year and shut it down completely in, a, in what appeared to be a completely coordinated effort to stop people from hearing from these doctors indicates and, and it proves that these companies don't care anything about debate and they don't care about an actual discussion of an answer. The answer to coronavirus has already been predetermined, and now we're all being ushered and shepherded toward that predetermined answer. Rather than listening to medical professionals from across the spectrum and having a discussion and debate about what the right steps are moving forward, what doctors have seen in their offices and in their clinics moving forward, that is where we need to be. And I think that's what we just saw in Germany over the weekend. To come full circle here, a lot of media is confused about why these groups of so-called conspiracy theorists and right-wingers are going out into the streets and demanding an end to the lockdown. Because what they're not understanding is that for tens of thousands of people, for hundreds of thousands of people, for millions of people worldwide, there is a strong belief that there is not honest science taking place. And instead, they believe that governments around the world are sitting in positions of authority and telling the general public, here's what you will think, here's what you will believe, and here's how you will behave. Unsere Forderung ist zurück zur Demokratie, weg mit den Gesetzen, die uns einhängen. What we saw happening in Germany over the weekend were people who said, government is not listening to us. And we want to return, they said, using these words, to democracy to a democracy. What does that mean? It simply means that in democratic society, we believe that those who are in authority are only there by the consent of the governed, and they are supposed to act through the consent of the governed. They are not supposed to remove consent from the governed. They are not supposed to remove dissent from the governed. And that is not a democracy, which is why so many people around the world are now beginning to push back.